Hello, everyone, and welcome to our uh, Genie product update. And thank you all for being here. I'd like to begin today by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we stand and meet virtually today. And for me, um, I'm based in Brisbane, so that is the Turbal people and the Yagara people. And I would also like to pay my respects to elders past, um, present and emerging. My name is Neve Tobin, and I am the Director of Product Strategy and Design here within the Magentis Practice Management Division. And I'm really excited to have the opportunity to share this update with you today. The team has been doing uh, a lot of great work with the Genie product and our Gen2 product, and it'll be great to, to share all of that progress with you. Also presenting today is Lucas Arundel. Uh, Lucas is the Head of Design within the Magentis Practice Management Division, and he'll chat to you later in the session about a new initiative, uh, which is our craft group. So today I'm going to be talking you through the Genie product roadmap. Um, and what I'll do is I'll share what we have released recently in what's new and improved. Uh, what can you, what you can expect to see in the Genie product over the coming months? So we have a, a new release coming soon. And then I'm also going to provide a short update on our progress with Gen 2 for those of you that might be considering um, a shift to the cloud. And then finally, as I mentioned, you'll hear from Lucas, who will talk to you about our recently launched craft group, which is a new program, which is enabling us to ensure that your voice is heard and continues to be heard in both the product roadmap and, um, and product design decisions that, that we're making. At the very end, we're going to have some time for Q&A. So, you know, throughout the presentation, if you do have questions, please add them into the Q&A function. We have some team members um, on the webinar who might be able to answer them as we go, but otherwise um, we'll do our best to answer them uh, right at the, at the end. Now, before I jump into the product roadmap updates, I just want to spend a minute sharing a bit about our platform vision as this is how we see ourselves helping you, the medical professionals, deliver better health outcomes over the coming years. And our vision is really centered around a technology platform that we've been working on for a number of years now. And this platform is important because it's what's gonna enable us to develop, to provide you with ongoing product innovations into the future. And these innovations are really centered around three key objectives. So the first is improving the patient experience by providing you with the tools to automate the patient journey. Um, second is focusing on how we can connect up with what is a very disconnected ecosystem today <clears throat> and ensure that you have the data at the point of care with the patient um, that you need and that the communication between yourself and other parts of the ecosystem is more secure and, and streamlined. And then the final one is really understanding how we can bring data-driven insights into your workflow day-to-day. So this is about things like clinical decision support, workflow assistance, but also insights on how you can improve your practice's performance. All of this though only becomes a reality alongside Genie and Gen2, which are our core practice management um, system products. And so today the updates I'll provide will be primarily centered around um, Genie, Genie specifically, uh, and then a little bit touching on what we're doing in, in some of these other areas. So to improve the core experience with Genie and to get Gen2 ready as well for, uh, for your practice to move to Gen2 in the future, we really have been listening to your feedback on what needs to change. So over the years, we've built a rigorous voice of customer program, which is centered around capturing uh, feedback from every interaction our team has with you. So this is when you contact us on support, it's if you have a trainer um, on site, if we meet you um, at a conference, or it could be an interaction you have with one of our, our development teams. And this um, feedback repository is now thousands of pieces of feedback. And we regularly review this to understand what is most important for us to focus on um, for you. The feedback we have received so far highlights uh, workflows associated with consulting with patients, managing correspondence, and managing appointments as the key areas that you would like to see improvements in. More specifically, as we dug deeper into the consulting with patients workflow, the feedback related to being able to um, more easily find relevant uh, clinical history uh, information and the ability to record measurements or clinical forms. 
We also had over 100 requests for improvements to the diagnostic requesting uh, workflow, mostly focused on the ability to create digital requests. And then finally, there were requests for improvements on how the prescription of controlled medicines is managed, including wanting to integrate access to real-time prescription monitoring and improvements to the authorization, uh, author sorry, authority prescription workflows uh, within the product as well. Within managing appointments then, the themes uh, there were largely centered around um, SMS appointment reminder uh, functionality improvements. Uh, there was actually over 150 pieces of feedback in this space alone. Um, there was also some requests for improvements to things like how referral validity is, is managed, um, being able to do administrative notes associated with appointments, better management of telehealth appointments, and also auditing appointment book changes um, that were occurring across the, across the practice. So a wealth of information and guidance for us um, to really help us understand where we can deliver the most value for you um, as we make these decisions. The other thing we do um, to understand your feedback is we regularly run a, a large customer survey. And last June, we ran a customer survey um, asking a series of questions relating to your experience using um, Genie. So thank you to everyone who completed um, this survey as the survey responses and the free text responses you provided have been very helpful in helping us um, make roadmap decisions. For some reason, my slide is not changing. Let me just see what's happening here. You probably run ahead for me now. Yes, there we go. Um, so this is the slide I, I wanted to bring up because um, it's been really helpful in helping us understand specifically what software integrations you would like to see with, with Genie. In relation to product integrations, we asked which uh, software products you would like to see integrated. So what you'll see is on the very top here, uh, almost 60% of you really wanted to see digital pathology and radiology ordered. Um, this was closely followed by a practice accounting integration. So basically Myob and, and Zero, And then it was direct GP specialist referrals, followed by electronic bookings to, to theaters. So I'm really excited to share that we've been able to develop um, two out of these top four and release them in the last um, six months. Pathology requests for um, pathology e-requests for Sonic Healthcare Labs just launched this month and e-bookings an electronic theater booking um, tool, which we've initially uh, released with HealthScope um, was made available towards the end of last year. So I'll talk to these um, features in, in a bit more detail um, lately, but thank you again for your feedback as it really helps us to focus our attention on, on what you're going to uh, find most valuable. So I guess if we now have a look at some of the new functionality that has been released in Genie um, recently, Genie version 10, the 64-bit version of Genie launched um, last year. And since then, over 70% of practices have upgraded uh, to Genie version 10. So mid last year, when the upgrade was released initially, a very small number of practices experienced some server stability issues. Those that were impacted, however, um, experienced server instability at a regular cadence. So, you know, they were experiencing crashing maybe multiple times a day or multiple times a week. So it was really impactful. And we heard loud and clear from your feedback that stability and product performance was the number one priority. You know, admin staff, clinical staff just weren't going to be able to work if the basic stability of the Genie product was not in place. So as a result of this, about midway through last year, the Genie team solely focused on improving service stability and performance across the app for almost six months, actually. In Genie version 10.2.6, 10 10 which we released before Christmas, and then again in 10.2.7, uh, which we released in January, a number of performance improvements um, were, were provided. And this included resolving delays when opening practice preferences, user preferences, the patient demographics, which was the one that we had received the most feedback on, um, and a number of the clinical windows. A number of changes were also made to reduce the load of the server and really provide that service stability. This included things like removing some processes that ran on the server to the client, 
uh, implementing a restart function for processes that, that run for an extended period of time. And then also us going in and just removing some code, uh, which was no longer required and which we believed was causing the server application to hang um, when it was installed in, in certain environments, so often virtual environments. So we're now extremely confident that the latest versions of Genie are very stable. So we don't have any practices reporting um, server instability that it relates to the version 10 um, upgrade. So if you have been holding off um, updating, please wait no more uh, and update and enjoy all of the new functionality that is available to you on, on version 10 in an effort to support practices to, you know, make the right decision about updating. The Genie team is also going to be publishing a list of known issues for each release um, that has uh, occurred. Um, so as issues are identified or reported within a version, they'll be documented on the release notes page. So please, you know, jump on there um, and ensure that you're informed before you decide to update. And if you have any questions, please reach out to us um, or, or on support um, if we can help you get, get upgraded to the latest version of, of Genie. So one of the new pieces of functionality, though, that is available in, in recent versions of, um, of Genie V10 is real-time prescription monitoring. Um, and this is now available within the prescription workflow. So previously, many of you might have been using a product called SafeScript, which was allowed you to understand the management of controlled medicines external to Genie. But real-time prescription monitoring has now brought that management of controlled medicines into your practice workflow. So off the back of your feedback, we developed its integration um, last year. And since that went live, over 5,000 warnings related to prescriptions have actually been presented to practitioners. So this has you know, significantly improved the efficiency with which uh, practitioners can get access to this information and also helping them to ensure that there's ultimately better clinical outcomes for, um, for their patients. So that was a big focus for us um, last year. The team also developed uh, a quick linking workflow for pathology results. We heard that the number of clicks required for linking pathology results when there was no action required to be taken on the result was really problematic. So the team developed a quick link button uh, when reviewing results, which means that any matched results can be linked with just one click um, if no action is required. And as such, these results are not getting added uh, to the investigations action list, which also pre prevents you know, further steps needing to be taken uh, down the line. Another small but really impactful change was developed for large genie practices who had been requesting the ability to record a reason for invoicing um, for internal business purposes. So a new service line field has been added to invoices to allow this, and the fields can be reported on uh, in, in quick reports. Because this is intended for internal business purposes or internal practice purposes, uh, this field, the content of this field doesn't print on an invoice, uh, and it's also not transmitted to, to Medicare or um, via Eclipse claims either. So it is just internal to, to your practice. And as mentioned earlier, we're really excited about the release of two new integrations with Genie, one being e-requests and the other being e-bookings. Over the past 18 months, we've been collaborating with HealthScope to develop this digital procedure booking workflow that really is aimed at saving practices time when um, booking theater. This, uh, we launched a pilot in May last year, and then we did a national rollout from about September. And this new workflow uh, with HealthScope Hospitals, and this new workflow is free for all um, practices to, to use. So what happens is eBookings takes the patient and the procedure information that you've already entered into the procedure record in Genie and shares this across to the hospital's um, bookings team electronically. It's removed the need for sending any draft lists and it also allows you to upload the consent form as part of the process. So this massively is reducing the incidences of where um, patient paperwork is, is lost. So during the time that we have uh, released this, um, the I guess what practices are telling us are some of the key benefits include you know, significant practice efficiency due to the reduced admin time associated with managing um, the bookings, particularly around not needing to generate all of those draft um, theater lists and practices are telling us that they're 
you know, saving hours every week. Uh, lost forms are avoided with the booking and consent being supplied on the day. And the booking status can actually be tracked in real time. So you send the booking across uh, to the hospital. Um, they can provide feedback on that booking if some information is is missing. Um, and that enables you to take action um, earlier, which is, which is really great. The patient experience is also improved now because the booking goes to the hospital on the day or soon after the consult. The patients are actually receiving a confirmation that the hospital has received their booking really quickly. So this means they're not being left wondering, you know, what's happening with my procedure? Um, is it going ahead during this period of time, which we know can be anything from weeks to months. Um, and it also means that there is an opportunity to identify issues like health fund eligibility much earlier. Um, than there was in the past. And so this is reducing the number of last minute cancellations, uh, which is really great both from the patient's point of view and um, and the practice's point of view. So Genie customers need to be on 10.2.3 uh, or later uh, to use this functionality. And the instructions for how to get started on this are available on our, our knowledge base. So you can just um, switch it on and get going if you operate at a at a health scope hospital. We are speaking with the often in these forums when we talk about e-bookings, everyone wants to know if it's at their local hospital. So just want to reassure you that we are speaking with Ramsey, Calvary, Mater, and all of those other large um, private hospital groups about getting e-bookings connected up with um, with those private hospitals as as well. Uh, E-requests is the other um, big integration that we worked on um, this, this year. And just last month, we launched it for uh, Sonic Healthcare. It is a digital pathology requesting workflow that allows you to create, send, and view pathology requests directly within Genie. And again, there's no additional cost uh, for this to, to Genie practices. So when, we're create, when creating an e-request, the request is sent directly to the lab and an SMS is sent straight to the patient. So we've heard so many stories from specialist practices that patients often lose their request forms. And this means that the practices are having to regenerate the request and then often print, scan, email um, the request to the patient, which adds a significant amount of admin overhead of creating and sending these requests for patients when they're not in the rooms or if you need tests done before they present for surgery or before they present for, for a consultation. For this initial release, we've partnered with uh, Sonic Healthcare. So we launched for Sull Sullivan and Nicolades labs in Queensland, Northern New South Wales, and the Nord Northern Territory. I'm struggling with the THs today. Uh, Northern Territory uh, in November last year. And then we've just done a national rollout for Douglas Hanley Moyer, Melbourne Pathology and Clinipath um, earlier this, this month. We're seeing a huge adoption with thousands of requests already being generated. And as I mentioned, some of the benefits um, that practices are sharing with us that they're experiencing is, you know, greater visibility of requests that have been sent to the lab, uh, which increases practice efficiency. You're not having to chase up. Has the patient actually gone and had the test um, completed? Because you can now see this uh, within the product because the SMS is being sent straight to the patient. There's less overhead, as I mentioned, about actually generating um, this request. And also, again, an improved patient outcome as practices can easily check if the if the request has actually been done and they can take action and follow up um, on that if it's needed, you know, to address transcription errors or something um, that might have occurred within the test or to just prompt the patient to actually go and have that blood test um, completed. So really exciting um, to see this go live uh, for our Genie and, uh, and Gentry practices and for practices to be getting so much value from it so, so quickly. So I hope that's been helpful to hear what's available in kind of the latest releases. So, you know, what we have released in the last three to six months or so. Um, over the coming months, you can expect even more new functionality um, to be released. And the next one is super exciting. So very soon, a new version of Genie will be released, which is Genie version 10.2.8. Uh, and this release really responds to your feedback relating to the improvements that you wanted to see with SMS appointment reminders. So specifically, the team have been working to enable the ability to send different appointment reminders per appointment types. So some of the verbatim feedback uh, can be seen here, and it's really centered around needing to be able to send 
different appointment reminder messaging for different contexts. So I want to send something for a new patient and I want to send a different message for a review or a post-op patient. Um, this functionality will be available in, in, in 10 to 8. And what it allows you to do is create um, multiple SMS uh, templates and then select which template that you want to send depending on the appointment type that has been allocated to the patient or the practitioner that that appointment has been um, booked in with. So based on the feedback that we've received to date asking for this capability, we're really excited to, um, to get this release out to, to customers. The team is going to extend on this um, functionality further to give practices the flexibility to send multiple reminders for an appointment and also to send them at different um, frequencies. So for an example, for a new patient, you might decide that you would prefer to send a reminder at seven days and again, one day prior to the appointment, just to ensure that you know, you're maximizing or minimizing the number of did not attends for any given appointment day. Um, but then for post-op, uh, appointments or review patients, you might decide that you only want to remind them one day, two day or three days um, prior. So this next um, release of functionality, which will be later on, will enable you to do that. We've also heard that managing referral um, validity is, is challenging. And so another part of um, the functionality that will be released in, in a later version will actually allow users to append a template in the appointment reminder to remind the patient to bring a referral if the referral has expired within the within the genie system so that's you know removing the need for you to check forward referrals and actually um, follow this up manually instead if once you switch this on the system would do that automatically um, automatically for you and then finally in the sms space space what we will be doing is enabling the ability to have a dedicated phone number per practice. So the current SMS system allocates a random number when um, sending messages out to, to patients. So what happens is your patient might then end up with um, receiving messages from your practice from multiple different numbers, or it could, what we have also had reported, receive a message from you, but then receive a message from another business unrelated, like a Bunnings or something. So this can all obviously cause some confusion for patients because they don't know if this is, you know, genuinely your practice. So what we want to do is um, enable practices to have a dedicated phone number so that patients will receive their appointment reminders from this practice from the same number every, every single time. And then last but not least, for those of you who update uh, records to the Australian Immunization Register, you'll probably be aware that um, there are some new requirements for vaccinations from the 1st of March, and all practices will be required um, to be using the new air system by October this year. We know that a large number of GPs, ONG and paediatric practices, uh, amongst you know, a number of other specialties, use air every day. And the team therefore has the work underway to meet these new requirements. And we'll be releasing this in an upcoming version of Genie once um, we have completed the compliance testing. So that's everything I wanted to share in relation to the Genie product updates in the short term. But I know that many customers on the call today uh, will be interested in moving to the cloud. And so we also wanted to share a brief update about um, Gen 2. Um, to get Gen2 ready for Genie customers, we have um, significantly increased the number of teams that are working on core Gen2 experiences. We now have uh, three teams working in the core Gen2 space, a team working on mobile, and we also have a team that is dedicated to working on the process of moving your data from Genie to Gen2. Um, and we have also accelerated progress on our marketplace. Uh, and what that will enable us to do is connect up third party products, which you use in Genie today. So like transcription, if you think NTS and those types of products uh, or online booking products um, into Gen 2 as well, which has been a gap for us in, in the past. And so today I'm excited to share a general update on how Gen 2 is growing. Um, and then also just share some of the roadmap highlights for where we have made progress off the back of your feedback um, over the last few months. So as we look at the number of specialist practices moving to the cloud, we know right now that about 40% of practices across Australia have already made the move. And for those that have made the move, over half of them are using Gen 2. 
So what this means is that Gentoo is by and far the fastest growing cloud practice management software. And we actually have currently over 1800 practice um, practices using it. So this means that Gentoo is managing the care or Gentoo practices, I should say, are managing the care of over 12 million patients um, and have provided more than 32 million appointments and 3.2 billion in, um, in healthcare services. A question we often get asked from Genie practices though is, you know, is Gentoo suitable for my practice? So I thought I would share a little bit about who has moved from Genie to Gentoo. And so if we look at those practices who've already made the move, we see that there is a broad range of specialties uh, represented. Orthopedics, obstetrics, general surgery and psychiatry certainly account for significant um, numbers, but really most specialties are represented. It, ooh, 18 months ago, if we looked at the size of practices, everyone's had a sneak peek on my slides. If we uh, looked at the size of practices migrating from Genie to Gen 2, it was primarily single practitioners. Um, so I think it was, you know, probably 80 or 90% single practitioners. But having looked at looking at this now more recently, what we see is that a significant number of two to three practitioner practices have now made the move and a really large number of practices that have been in business for more than 10 years have moved uh, successfully and are having a really great experience. We therefore find that the best way of making the decision around what is the right time for you to move from Genie to Gen 2 is, is to understand the breadth and the depth of functionality that you use within Genie. So if you are interested in moving to the cloud and you want to learn more about Gen 2, please reach out and have a chat with one of our team. They're really knowledgeable about the Genie product and what's available within um, Gen 2 today. And they'll be able to help you understand if now's the right time uh, for you to make, uh, to make that move. Over the past six months, uh, lots has been happening uh, with Gentoo uh, to get it ready. You know, recently the team completed a massive uplift in the letter writer module, including improvements to letterheads, templates, um, increasing the breadth of letter references that you can use within the letter writer, as well as adding the ability to be able to send documents um, via secure message delivery. So think HealthLink, Argus, um, medical objects. Improvements have also occurred to patient and practice um, communications. Practices um, can send multiple SMS templates, so similar to what we're about to build in Genie, that's already available within Gen2, and then use these templates for sending ad hoc or bulk um, SMS um, messaging. And you can also set up the schedules to be able to send different messages by provider or, or appointment type. Within the practice, um, Gen2 Tasks functionality was previously user to user only. So we obviously recognize that many practices have staff sharing roles. And so this functionality has been improved to no longer be private by default, uh, where users are able to see the tasks of, of others. Last year, Genie practices who had inquired about Gen2 told us that there was really two significant functionality gaps in Gen2 for them. And these included the concept of the Genie process folder and for surgical practices, uh, procedure templates. So I'm really delighted to share that over the last kind of month or six weeks, both of these features are now available in Gen2. This means it, for the process folder that documents can come into a centralized location and from there can be allocated to be reviewed by a practitioner or filed in the patient's um, record. While the procedure templates uh, feature is very similar to what you have in Genie, where you can create a template that then can be used procedure on procedure to make the document, the documentation of procedure notes um, far more, far more efficient. We've also made huge progress um, in the mobile app space. So the Gentoo mobile app is now available to all Gentoo users. So this is clinical and administrative users and includes our enhanced um, voice recognition functionality. So for those of you who might not be familiar, the previously the Gentoo mobile app was really only used um, for our voice product and voice, which is based on the same technology that you might use with uh, or be familiar with with Dragon Medical One is really about supporting practitioners to spend less time on clinical documentation uh, and allows them to translate voice to text live on the screen um, to generate letters. So for Gen 2 practitioners who are using voice, what we see is that they're dictating letters far closer to the patient appointments and really reducing the time that it's taking to complete a letter and get it back to the referring doctor or the, or the GP. 
Within the mobile app itself, though, um, we've really been focused in the last couple of months on building out the functionality and information that's available for practitioners um, to use. So staff can now obviously view appointments for any practitioner within the appointment diary. They can review clinical notes um, and then most recently create consults and um, tasks. Recently, we've just added the ability to create patients on the go. And in the coming months, we'll be adding the functionality to be able to review incoming results and letters uh, within the within the app, which I think will be a big value add for practitioners for when they're um, when they're away from the, the rooms. Over the coming months, the Gentoo teams, uh, I guess if we think of like the next three to six months, the Gentoo teams will be working on enabling configuration in clinical workflows. So this includes being able to uh, customize or configure the existing clinical experience to remove fields such as past procedures or measurements, as an example, if they're not relevant um, to them. But it also will include the ability to create configurable scoring, specialty specific um, clinical tools, very similar to the checklist type workflow that is available within, within Genie today. Uh, so that will be a big step forward and covers off on a lot of, you know, the gaps that we're still seeing between um, between Genie and Gen2. And then last but not least, we are very conscious that many of you use products um, in Genie that uh, may not currently integrate into, into Gen2. So some of the examples I mentioned earlier were transcription or the online bookings um, tool. So over the past six months, um, the team has been working on the foundations that is needed to be able to connect um, all of these third party products into, into Gen 2. Some of the earlier ones uh, or use cases that we're looking at um, are transcription, digital consent and uh, online appointments. And we're hoping to be able to launch uh, some of these integrations in kind of the, the second half of the, the year. So as you can see, there's lots happening to build out Gen2 capability and really make sure that we're ready for Genie customers to migrate uh, to it uh, when they're ready. And so over the next um, months, you know, we'll continue to keep you informed both in our email communications and in um, future webinars on the progress that is being made um, there. So now I'm going to hand over to Lucas, who is going to talk to you quickly about our craft group, and then I'll be um, back on for the Q&A at the, at the end. Over to you, uh, Lucas. Thank you, Neve. Um, so now that you've heard some exciting things happening in both Genie and Gen2, I'm here to share with you a little bit around how we develop new features and invite those of you interested uh, in participating in the Genie's craft group uh, to help shape what those solutions um, might look and feel like. Um, as Neve mentioned earlier, my name's Lucas Arundel and I'm head of design here at um, Magentis Practice Management, leading the design teams who work tirelessly um, at understanding our users and developing innovative solutions to fulfill our purpose of helping medical professionals deliver better health outcomes. So in this short session, we'll just generally cover what it, why do we have a craft group? What is the craft group and how can you participate? So starting with why around the craft group, you know, ultimately we believe that software shouldn't be something that you have to use rather than something that you, you want to use. Because we know that most of you probably didn't get into this business to work with software. It's, it's, it's probably been more around the people and the patients that you want to help. So we really, really want to focus on making sure that the experience is as good as possible. Our approach to building Genie and Gen2 places you, the user, in the center of that. And so solutions are usually designed in a very collaborative way and guided by you. And as an enabler of this kind of user-centered design, we use a process called design thinking with our product and design teams. And design thinking really places a strong emphasis on building a deep understanding of our end users before we jump into the solution mode. And finally, this can be done through various methods of user experience research or UX research, um, such as one-on-one -on -one interviews, data analysis, desktop research, on-site visits, and focus groups. So here's just a bit of an example of an artifact that we have up at, at Magentis um, HQ here in Brisbane. Uh, in this photo, you can see an incredibly detailed medical professional journey map up on the wall, um, which our design team built um, based on a, a, an understanding that we have of, of your context workflows and the interconnectedness of all of the jobs that you have you know, in any given day or week. 
And as we're working on new features with, with our users, this really helps um, us to place those features and jobs in a context so that we can look for different ways to innovate, doing things like um, reducing repetitive tasks, reducing friction in your workflows, and ensuring the right information is available at all points during the episode of care. Um, and as Neve mentioned earlier, we have a broad range of inputs that are collected into our voice of customer repository. We have 11,000 pieces of feedback that we can draw upon to ensure that the areas we're focusing on are really based on, on you know, your voice. And this helps with identifying what those problems are. But when it comes to actually taking action on, on finding solutions, the VOC is really just the beginning. So getting from those problems to the solutions is really the bread and butter of our design and product teams here at Magentis. Although design and soft, both design and software development can seem like sort of fairly discrete, separate technical tasks, all of our teams working on Genie and Gentoo come to work each day with a problem solving mindset. It's not in reality, it's not really as linear as it shows here. It's probably a little bit more like this and you know, we don't mind getting a little bit messy with our problem solving. So as I mentioned before, um, our design and product teams follow the key steps in the design thinking process, which are generally made up of understanding a problem deeply, creating strategically and learning iteratively. So what does that really mean? Understanding deeply means that we're, we're, we take time to understand a user's problem and really work closely with them uh, before we jump into building the solutions. Albert Einstein famously said that if he had an hour to solve a problem, he'd spend 55 minutes thinking about the, the problem itself and five minutes thinking about solutions. And we found that taking that kind of approach has really helped to make sure that what we deliver to you is, is really on the money or, or, or serves your needs. Um, the creating strategically side is really around rapidly trying out solutions that directly solve for the needs that we uncover and ensuring that we take a pragmatic approach to delivering it to you as soon as possible, rather than the idea of spending a long, long time trying to build all the bells and whistles, only to find out later that we've actually missed the mark. So this is where that collaboration becomes so important. That in that phase, that's usually where we use things like clickable prototypes or visual mock-ups and that kind of uh, scenario testing that some of you who've uh, who have spoken with our design team may have already experienced. And lastly, the learning iteratively side of things. This simply means that we want to take a step forward with what we think the right solution is by bringing it to you, the users, and getting your feedback and actually iterating on the solution or, or making changes. Many of our craft group members have actually found in the past this is quite an exciting step because they get to not only hear their feedback but actually see it um, you know, brought back to them quite quickly and feel as though they're able to, to really take uh, help shape the product. So coming back to why we have a craft group, because at the end of the day, our users are the key to delivering great solutions. And in order to engage in a more meaningful way with our users, we've, we've, we've formulated a little bit of a group that, that helps uh, coordinate things a little bit better, especially knowing that you're all very busy. So what is the craft group? The craft group is a group of customers who've expressed their interest in participating in ongoing engagements with us and to test out new ideas. It enables members to, sh to help shape the future of Genie through their personal insights, needs, and preferences. And as we work through the roadmap, we'll be able to re reach out to you and seek feedback on different um, development areas. Um, you're, as a participant in the craft group, you're able to determine which things uh, within Genie are, are of interest to you in terms of giving feedback and is always catered to your availability. You can see an example in this diagram where the, the product team for Genie may, may put the word out and sort of say, we're looking at this topic at the moment. Is anyone interested in participating? And then we'll, we'll conduct a series of interviews um, with, with individual users. Despite being called a group, we're not actually doing a lot of group work just yet, um, but you, you, your time uh, will be well spent just um, having us hear your voice. Often then we'll, we will create those prototypes based on what we hear from you. And if you're interested in, in coming back for other iterations, we can, we can test those ideas with you. And then as we start to, to, to hone in on the solution and we enter things like beta testing phases, you also have the option of participating in that to really get hands-on in real working software as it gets finalized. So as I mentioned before, we're really flexible with your time and in the engagements are usually 30 to 60 minute um, interviews that are based on your availability. There's no preparation needed for these sessions. It's just really uh, all we really need to do is hear your perspective and, and get feedback. 
Uh, and as I mentioned before, many craft group members have been quite engaged uh, as a result of going through these sessions and then put their hand up to, to become those beta testers as well. So that's always an option too. So finally, the how, how can you participate? Really, if this sounds uh, interesting to you and you'd like to be part of it, um, after this webinar, there will be a short survey that pops up and you can just indicate your preferences on, on that survey. And um, um, then, then we'll be in touch shortly after that. Um, so thank you all.